Hi, my name is Tawny, and you're listening to the newest episode of Sinister Sightings. Hey y'all, I'm Donna. And I'm Carrie. And we are Paranormal Chicks. Sinister Sightings 25. And you just heard Tawny. Tawny, Tawny, T T T. What was the point of that game? I don't know. I, I just did the whole thing. Because it, it wasn't like any, mini, money, mo. Was mm. it? Was that the point of it? Terror, terror, T T T, terror, terror, T T T. T T T. T T T. I don't know. What was the? What was after that? I don't know. Well, that's dumb. If anyone knows, please let us know. All right, you ready? Hit me with the scary. Hello, ladies. I just started listening to your podcast, and even though I'm so busy, I'm almost back to last Halloween. You two are so easy to listen to, and you make me giggle like I do with my BFF. I love it. Oh, oh thank you. That's a huge compliment. Mm-hmm. I was involved in a true crime story that was featured on an episode of Dateline, American Monster, a documentary called Rough Cut, and a couple of shows I can't remember right now. Um, that all sounds like shit I watch. Uh, that sounds like we got a celebrity in our midst. Mm-hmm. Can you give me your autograph? <laughs> Could I say it any creepier? <laughs> right? Okay. It happened in 2004, and I'm still contacted now and then to appear on something, to which, at this point, I decline. I'm over it. But every time I listen to one of your stories, I think and wonder if you'd be interested. Uh, we are. In 2003, when I was 25... I auditioned for a local horror movie because I'd always wanted to be a horror queen. And I'd been acting on and off since childhood. I didn't get cast immediately, but three weeks before filming, an actress broke her wrist, so I was called in. The movie was to be called Through Hike, A Ghost Story. It was about five college friends who are hiking the Appalachian Trail. They accidentally awaken a ghost who then picks them off one by one. The writer, director, and producer was Blaine Norris. Blaine and I got along from the start, as I'm only days older than him, and we were a little older than most of the cast. The cast and crew, about 10 of us, spent a week in the woods along the trail, shooting the movie, sweating our asses off in the August heat, and just trying to make this movie as good as it could be. Too fucking hot. Yeah, like, mm mm-mm. I mean, can you shoot this shit in winter? There's no need for us all to have swamp ass. (laughs) I mean, can we CGI the outside? Right. Let's just do it in an air-conditioned place. <laughs> and can I be seated the whole time? Look, just just give me CGI legs. <laughs> okay. On a serious note, she says, but we didn't finish. Oh, fuck. That fall, we met near the trail and finished shooting. Blaine then went through a separation from his wife. I accidentally set him up with my best friend, and they saw each other for a few weeks. Throughout all of this, he told us all he was working on editing the movie. Then one day, he told me on the phone that his best friend's wife was found murdered just days before, and things were weird at work because co-workers were suspicious of his friend. His best friend was Brian Trimble, who... Holy shit! Whose wife, Randy, was found in the garage of her home, stabbed 27 times, and strangled with an electrical cord. For the next few months, we talked at length about the murder. Then, the authorities turned their attention on Blaine. I also talked with him about this, about possible motives, which he blew out of the water one by one. Eventually, enough evidence was found, mostly by his Kmart receipt, which said he'd purchased a black sweatsuit and a knife. And Blaine was hauled away. He admitted to it. Brian was also hauled away. Here, it was a plan between the two of them to get a hold of her life insurance, partly to finance Blaine's horror movie. Oh my God. This really threw me. Blaine was my friend. I let my best friend be alone with him, and he stabbed another human being 27 times. That you can be friends with someone who is capable of something like that, it teaches you that you just never really know. So here's my story. I love you too. I wish you the best of luck with your podcast. Have a great night. Holy shit. She didn't say whether we could say her name or not, so we're going to call her Sophia. And Sophia, that was a good fucking story. Yeah, it was. Wowza.
holy shit. Mm-hmm. It's so true, though. You really never know. Because you really, well, I feel like I know you. Like, I feel like I know what you're capable of. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think you do. I, I know that you are not capable of killing someone for insurance money. No. But I definitely think you're capable of killing someone in self-defense. Well, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, so, like, I really feel like I know what you're capable of. And I feel like, I mean, I drop bombs on you a lot, but I really do feel like you know what I'm capable of, too. Yeah. You know, but if it's someone that you haven't known for 20 years, mm-hmm. you, I mean, and again, we spend too much fucking time together. You know, like, uh, we. Yeah. This bitch. She's <laughs> supposed to say, no, we don't. <laughs> I mean, hello. I'm like, when are you getting home? Are you home? Are you home? Hey. What do you want to have for dinner tonight? Yeah, are we eating tonight? Uh, <laughs> are we recording tonight or are we swimming? <laughs> <laughs> are we going to our salvage place? Yeah, and then what about Michael's and Joanne's? <laughs> I mean, is it friendship or just codependency or is it the same thing? I feel like that's one and the same. <laughs> I think, but I do think it takes a long time to cultivate that. Yeah. And it helps that we've known each other since we were young. Yeah. I think like, you know, like, let's say you meet somebody when you're 35 and y'all get married and, you know, when you're 45 and they've gone off the deep end and killed their best friend for the thing, you're like, well, shit. And it's like, well, because you don't really know yeah. them. You know, but whereas if you've kind of grown up with them and all of that, you've been through so much, I feel like mm-hmm. that's when you do. So, I guess the well, whole point is you don't really never know someone, but sometimes you can. Well, we never lost touch. Yes. You know, so it's not like something happened and... This huge thing in your life that I never found out about or whatever. I mean, again. Codependent. Yeah. This is titled, The Time I Was Either Having a Really Bad Dream or I Was Possessed. Oh, shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, ladies. I sent a story about my friend's experience growing up, but I wanted to send one of my experiences for you. It's a pretty short one, but it still scares me to think about it. I was sleeping in my room and woke up in the middle of the night, frozen in fear, seeing a tall black shadow walk around my room. After what felt like forever, I was able to move again and I flew to my mother's room. I'm a big baby. I know. Totally get it. (laughs) Same. Donna slept with her mother. I was about to say, uh, I mean, like literally till middle school. When I was in, I guess it was like middle school. Late middle school, early high school, my dad started going out of town for work, and he'd be gone for months at a time. Mm -hmm. And when he was gone, I would sleep with my mama. Yeah. And my dad worked offshore. Yeah. And when he stopped working offshore is when I stopped sleeping with Mm -hmm. her. She's probably like, damn it, Donna, get to your bedroom. Yep. And that's when they started locking the door, and I walked in on them. (laughs) I mean, we all know that story. And, I mean, I'm sure I had a lot of bad dreams from that, so let's get back to her story about a bad dream. Or she was possessed. Again, true. I went to sleep with my mom because there was no way my ass was sleeping in my room after that. But after that, it got very strange. Every time I closed my eyes, and I don't mean fall asleep, I would just close my eyes. I felt something taking over me more and more. What? And I would fight it each time thinking I'm just scaring myself. After some time, it was like I was living inside of my body. While something was controlling the outside of my body. Mm -mm. I kept trying to tell my mom, but she kept thinking I was having a bad dream. The final time I closed my eyes, I felt myself hunched over my mother on the bed. My neck was bent and I was smiling almost unhumanly large at my mother. Mm -mm. Not okay. She woke up this time and saw this. She (gasps) grabbed me and said, Brianna, pray. I prayed inside and boom, it was gone. It was like the air completely lifted. The fear was completely gone. To this day, my mother will not speak of this experience. I love y'all and I look forward to every week a new episode. Whoa. Holy shit. Can you imagine waking up and somebody, Mm -hmm. like much less your fucking child. No. Being on top of you with their neck turned and being like. (laughs) No. That'd be so fucking scary. Hey y'all, this is a long one, but a goodie, so I'm going to hop right in. This story takes place the night my mama passed away. Sorry, Donna. Oh, girl, it's okay. She had been in the hospital for a month and a half on life support, and regardless of how hard the doctors tried, 
They couldn't take her off or lower any of her supports without things getting really bad really fast. So we had to make the decision to remove supports. As she always said, if she ever needed machines to keep her going, not to let her. Leading up to her hospitalization, she was really housebound and on oxygen 24-7. Obviously, this was super stressful time for everyone, but especially on me as my dad relied heavily on me to explain things to him and teach him how to pay bills and rent and all that my mama had taken care of their whole lives. They'd been married for 48 years at this point in time, and I had given birth to my youngest, who was two months old, and Christmas was a month away. Oh, gosh. That is so much. Yes. Also, are you describing Donna's parents? Right. Like, every time my eye, I'm like, damn, damn. Mm -hmm. Okay. My oldest daughter, who was four at the time, and her were super close, and obviously she was really sad about her nana, but was able to see her in the hospital and have it not be scary because nurses are top-notch people and were able to hide anything under sheets and blankets in her room, like the dialysis machine, etc. That's so sweet. Yes. Gosh. Thank you, sidebar, to all of the nurses and medical professionals out there who go above and beyond for shit like that. Yes. So as I was saying, we had decided that life support was no way to carry on. My dad stayed at the hospital so my husband and I could go rest because we had been at the hospital for hours and hours, but promised to call us when things started happening so we could be there. So at about 1 a.m., my dad calls me, waking up our oldest and the baby. So he called a friend of the family who'd volunteered to come sit with the girls, and we went off to the hospital. My oldest daughter came downstairs and curled up underneath the Christmas tree. The baby eventually went back to sleep, and our friend watching on them dozed off too. We were at the hospital for hours and hours and hours when I eventually got too panicky and had to literally run off the ICU ward and outside because it was too intense for me. My husband and brother and sister-in-law followed out one by one. And once we had left, just my dad in there is when she went. Stubborn old broad didn't want us to see, I bet. Now that the sad bit is over, eventually we got home and my oldest girl wakes up and sits in my lap and tells me the following. A lady came when I was sleeping under the Christmas tree last night and had two cups of teas on a tray and flipped one over, but I wasn't scared. She looked nice. Context. My mama always told me that right before someone passed away, Her Nana would come visit one of the women in the family and do this, sort of signifying someone has left the tea party, so to speak. Oh, my gosh. She was a really neat lady in her own right and would do palmistry and tea leaf reading for people and know things she shouldn't have. Also, one time she beat up a boxing ref with her handbag for not calling my great uncle's opponent for punching below the belt. Super cool lady. Oh, my God. Badass. But nobody had ever told Little Miss about this at all. I told my daughter not to be scared of her if she sees the lady again and that she just wanted you to know that everything was okay. A few days later, Little Miss came down the stairs happy as can be. Kids bounced back fast as heck and again plopped in my lap. She told me she had a dream about her Nana and that they were at the park by Nana's old house and that Nana took a pair of scissors and snipped her hose And said she doesn't need it anymore because you can't be sick in heaven. And then they got to run and play in the park, something my mom never got to do with her. Oh, gosh. When we were cleaning out all of her things for my dad to move into his new apartment, we found a photo of my mom's Nana in her best with her signature maple leaf enamel brooch. And my daughter squealed and proclaimed, that's the lady that visited her. (sighs) Holy shit. I genuinely believe that Little Miss has had some crazy experiences that maybe whatever gifts my mama's Nana had got passed to her and that my mama visited her in her dreams to reassure her that everything was okay. She said a few other things that freaked me out like a week or so ago. She's nine now. When she told me that I was the best Muma she's ever had. Yep, Muma. She's always called me it and I love it. When I told her I'm the only Muma she's ever had, she told me, Nah, I've had a few, but you're the nicest one. Oh my gosh. Kids are scary. Creep it real <laughs> and stay spooky. XOX, your favorite Canadian. Oh, holy Hannah. Holy shitballs. Right? 
first of all, I just have to say that we are reading this email that's from April, but yesterday was the four-year anniversary of Donna's mom's passing. Yeah. So to read this email that we've had printed for mm, since April to yeah. read, because we read them in the order which we've gotten them. So for this to be read almost two full months later yeah. is because we're also recording this a week earlier yeah. than it's actually going to be released. That's crazy. What are the fucking odds? That is so crazy. And I'm glad that I read it because you wouldn't be able oh, to get through I that. Have, mm-mm. Like, holy shit. Like, w- when you said oxygen, I was like, skirt. I know. And then about your dad, I was like, uh, double skirt? Yeah. Whew. But, God, that is so good. That's so powerful. And I really do. Kids know shit, Yes. Man. Yes. Kids and animals, they fucking know shit because they aren't trained to not see it. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. Yes. To our favorite Canadian. That was amazing. Hey, ladies. So this is a story about how I came to know the paranormal was 100% real. When I was eight, my grandfather passed away. He was my very best friend, and I felt like it was completely my fault, but I didn't tell a soul. Oh, my God. I thought everybody would be mad at me if I said anything. A few of my grandmother's family members were out visiting from Portugal, and she was taking them out shopping for the day. I had slept over and was waiting for my mom to come get me. My grandfather made wine in these huge barrels, and they were drying in the yard. They were heavy. My grandmother told me before she left, no matter what happened, to not let him move the barrels or something bad might happen. What I didn't know was he had gone to the doctor earlier in the week because he had been having chest pains, and the doctor told him not to move anything heavy. I swear he purposely bored me. He was reading the newspaper and watching the news while I played Monopoly by myself. (laughs) (laughs) When my mom came, she said she was going shopping and asked if I wanted to go. My eight-year-old brain thought, if I go, I bet I can get her to buy me a toy. (laughs) So I went. He moved the wine barrels, had a heart attack (gasps) that night, and died. No. The worst possible thing happened. I was so ashamed of myself. How selfish not to stay and make sure he didn't move those barrels. Oh, God. And look what happened. Oh, God. But I never said a word to a single soul. When I was 16, my mom went to see a medium. I was laughing about it and going, ooh, you're going to talk to ghosts? She came out and I asked how it went. She said, good. Some stuff was weird, but it made sense. They talked with my grandfather. She never mentioned me to the woman. She went, then something weird happened. The lady asked, who's Jennifer? My grandparents are the only people that call me that. My mom said, my daughter. And the lady said, he wants you to tell her it wasn't her fault. God. Jesus. My mom asked what she meant, and she said, he won't tell me. But he said, if you just say it to her, she'll know what you mean. Holy shit. The floodgates opened. You mean me right now? (laughs) And I felt the hugest weight lifted off of me. I told her the story and she couldn't believe that I felt like that and never told anyone. Everyone I tell that story to gets chills. It's definitely one of my favorites. Love you gals. Jen. Yeah, it's me. Jen from Facebook. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. I'm like a blubbering mess over here. (laughs) Well, I had to take a second to not be a blubbering mess because, girl. Oh, my God. That was amazing. Like, what a gift. What a precious gift that you were given. That that is amazing. It's so amazing that she was able to get that from him because I know with my mama, like, how y'all said, it's not your fault. It's not that. And. It doesn't matter what It does say. not matter. You know, I know it's not, but in my heart of hearts, I feel it. You know, like, I could have done this. I could have done whatever. Even though I know I couldn't have. And it's all I want is to hear that. Her say. Yeah. Like, it's fine. And. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes. What a precious gift. Yeah. And then it's just like, ugh. Like, how much he loved her, you know, and just, oh, gosh. That is such a heartwarming story. 
And heartbreaking. Yes, heartbreaking. This one is titled Old Hagatha. Hello, Donna and Carrie. First, just need to say how amazing you both are, and thank you for keeping me company at work throughout my entire 10 hour shift. Oh boy. Oh Lord. Well, that's one episode for us if we get on a tangent. Right. One thing that keeps the boredom away. My name is Megan. Feel free to use my name, but my family is incredibly touchy on this subject, as I'm going to tell you about my grandfather's grandmother. So, however many greats you need to add in there. (laughs) (laughs) Who was, for the lack of a better word, a witch. Therefore, instead of saying her real name, I'm still in Donna's suggestion of calling her Old Hagatha throughout this email. Oh, yeah. On Facebook, she asked about it. I remember that now. Disclaimer. I know we have witches in the world who are wonderful people who use the craft in positive ways. Old Hagatha was not one of them. She was scary and destructive, and this is reflective of the person she is and not how I feel about witches in general. I'm truly sorry if this comes across as a generalization, and I promise you it is not my intention to offend or hurt. Also, this is a long one, but if you read this on air, buckle in, creepsters. (laughs) My dad sent me an email to help remind me of a few stories we know. Since he is a much better writer than me, I'm having him take over from here. (laughs) Hey, Dad. The only family members ever willing to talk about my great-great-grandmother were my father and his brother-in-law, my uncle, so I don't have a lot of information. The first mention came from my dad. I don't recall the context of the conversation, but he told me old Hagatha had suffered a serious leg injury as a young girl and was forced by her father to spend an entire night sleeping alone in the woods on her mother's grave. What? What in the actual fuck? She didn't say that. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> Whether this was meant as punishment or some bizarre superstitious form of treatment, no one knows. But I've always wondered if maybe she was injured in the same accident that killed her mother and possibly even to blame for it. Ooh. Whatever the case, I remember my dad pondering what such an ordeal might do to a young child's psyche. My second story was where I first heard of her referred to as a witch. My father's comment was so matter-of-fact that I just assumed he meant it figuratively, as in she was a nasty person. He told me once she stormed into a wedding celebration and stripped all the decorations from the walls while cursing the bride, groom, and guests. Again, by cursed, I assumed he simply meant used profanity. (laughs) But then he continued. His grandmother, who was old Hagatha's daughter once told him old Hagatha would levitate her children to, quote, pin them to the ceiling whenever they angered her. What? If they cried or protested, she would let them drop forcefully to the floor, then lift them up to the ceiling again, threatening more the same. All of the siblings would remain suspended in the air, terrified until their mother let them down to complete their chores. What the fucking Matilda's going on here? Uh Uh-uh, but but like sinister Matilda. The rest of what I know comes from my uncle. He married my father's sister and was therefore not a blood relation. He thought the stories were silly and the family's fears irrational, but he also told me about an emaciated, manging-looking dog that would emerge from the woods bordering the house whenever old Hagatha ventured out and followed her always at a distance wherever she went. It was only ever seen in her presence and supposedly left no prints or made any sound, though some claimed they'd hear a low, sinister growl beneath the trees when walking past the house sometimes. What? A few days before her death, old Hagatha came home wild-eyed and panicky, whispering, They're coming, over and over. Outside, a noisy group of crows was congregating on the roof and in the trees surrounding the house. One particularly large crow perched on an outside sill and began pacing back and forth in front of the window, eyeing her intently and pecking at the glass as if trying to get in. Old Hagatha called her children and gave them explicit instructions on what to do once she died. Her body was to be wrapped in a freshly killed deer skin and her coffin placed upright in a specific corner of the church. 
The family was then to hold a night-long prayer vigil without ceasing no matter what might occur until sunrise. Once she had passed, the family dutifully followed her instructions and were praying in the church until about midnight when a ferocious wind began howling outside. Suddenly, the church doors blasted open and a dark, nebulous mist was seen working its way up the aisle towards the coffin as the church walls resounded with a loud, shrill shrieking. The terrified family immediately fled to the rectory where the priest had already been awakened by the unearthly welling. Racing to the church, the priest found the doors wide open, but all else calm and orderly except for some wind-blown leaves on the floor and the trail of tar-like substance stretching down the aisle to the coffin. Oh, no, 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 no. Old Hagatha was buried, and a few days later, the family went to install her headstone. As they approached the plot, however, they noticed something sticking out of the ground. Coming closer, they saw the bone-thin chest and hindquarters of a mangy <gasps> dog sticking out of the freshly dug grave. What? The soil around the animal appeared undisturbed as if something had reached up and pulled the animal head first into the dirt. Back to Megan now. That's literally all we know about the woman. I'm not sure what's true, but it's obvious that whatever she was, it was not someone to mess with. My family is an open book except for this. My dad has tried for years to get more stories and nothing. Anyway, I better finish up this novel, so thank you for everything. Creep it real, Megan. Holy shit! That is some fucking... That, sh that should fucking be a book. Right? Write that shit down. Well, you already did. But, <laughs> but publish it, because that's fucking good. Yes! True or not, that's a good fucking story. Yes! Oh, my God. Well, also, if you watch Sabrina, the, like, the, the new, new one. one, when they do astral projection... Mm-hmm. They can only do it for so long, and then, like, birds come and peck at the windows and stuff. What? Yeah, and so, like, when when you were saying that, I was like, holy fuck. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It was just like, oh, my God. I don't, that, uh, I'm speechless. I could not imagine how scary that was, because, do you remember, you weren't here, but that day that my sister Kelly and her husband Mark came to help me put up my Christmas decorations outside, there were... 13 crows circle in my house and we were like holy shit yeah and so like that was like you know some of them were kind of close but most of them were like off in distance like i tried to take a picture and a video and you you honestly it just looked like black specks because they weren't that close so i cannot even imagine how scary it would have been if they were like walking on your windowsill yeah oh god mm-mm Mm -mm. tar like substance well and here's the thing too would it have been different if her family had not been scared and stopped praying at midnight because they were supposed to pray until the morning Ooh. and because she said no matter what happens yeah. keep praying and they got scared and went to the rectory Ooh. so did that change her outcome shit i don't know I want to know, but I don't want... I just want somebody to tell me the story. Like, I don't want to find out. I don't want anybody coming and telling me. Yeah, we don't want old hag as that to be like, uh, this okay, is what here's happened. the tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, somebody else tell me the tea of it. <laughs> I don't fucking want her to tell me. Mm-mm. No. Damn, that was good. So good. All right, you got one more? Hey, ladies in Marbu. I figured I would share this event that I basically broadcast in real time on the Facebook group for people who might not have been part of the family then. So I guess it all really started last summer. On one particularly hot day, BTW, we don't have central air, pray for me. No, fucking no. <laughs> I am out. Yeah, no. I'm already sweating. I spent much of the night not being able to sleep because it sounded like someone was walking up and down my hallway. We keep the hall light on because my kids are young and sleep better that way, and we all sleep with our doors open. My youngest was still in his crib at this point. So this particular night, I checked on my boys and went to bed. The minute I settled down, I heard someone walking down the hall. I waited a few minutes before looking because I didn't hear my oldest either using the bathroom or asking if he could cuddle with me. There was no one there. So I got up to check on the kids again. They were all sleeping. 
So I go and lay back down. Now the steps were walking the other way down the hall. I definitely got up, ran to check on the kids, but nothing. This went on all night until I eventually said out loud, could you please stop? I need to get some sleep. The noises stopped immediately. Oh my God. I mean, she probably said it in her mom voice and I don't have that. So a week or two after that, we were all getting up for the day and we're all upstairs. I was using the bathroom. My husband was still in bed with the younger beast and the elder beast was coming out of his bedroom. (laughs) That's so true, beast. (laughs) We had a TV downstairs that we used for video games and nothing else and wasn't even plugged in at the time. All of a sudden, we hear a very loud, unmistakable sound of white noise coming from a television. Mm -mm. My oldest ran down and quickly turned it off and then flew back upstairs to me. My husband then ran down and checked all the doors, which were, of course, locked. Mm -hmm. Even our dog was still sleeping. Not that he's any good as a guard dog anyway. The TV was unplugged and we were all a bit freaked out. A day or two later, I was again in the bathroom upstairs. TMI, but I'm a mom and I don't even bother shutting the door if no one's upstairs until my kids start World War III. Not TMI. Look, we will always talk about poop, but I think I feel like most moms do that. Well, I can't have a shut door because Marley pushes knocks it open. that shit open. Well, I was going to say, or the moms start with the door closed, but the kid always comes uh-huh. in. Uh-huh. I mean, I did it. Oh, absolutely. I still do it to my mama. <laughs> I mean, that's when you have them cornered. So I know. Mama, can I have 20 bucks? <laughs> we would also do that when my mom was asleep. Mm-hmm. Like, me and Kenneth had two spin the nighters come over, but she was asleep. And we were like, hey, mom, can so-and-so and so-and-so come over? And she was like, blah, blah, blah. and she woke up the next morning and was like, when they get here, like, y'all need to ask. And we're like, we did. You you totally said it was okay. <laughs> like, Okay. <laughs> I have a view straight down the hallway from the toilet, and as I was sitting there, I saw a black figure stick its head in what looked like a left arm or shoulder out of my youngest bedroom door. (gasps) After I saw the thing in the doorway, I saw what looked like a shadow of a shorter person child on the hallway wall. No. And of course, when you're the most fucking vulnerable, Mm -hmm. sitting on the fucking toilet. Hey, I would be happy being on the toilet because I'd shit myself. Mm Mm-hmm. Fear fart and a fear shit. Shart. (laughs) Oh my God, yes, fear shart. She said, I believe I posted pictures in the group. Yes. I will try to hunt those down because I remember that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay. I think at this point, I contacted Courtney for a reading and some sage because the house didn't feel good, especially in the kids' bedrooms. I should mention that the door to the attic is in my youngest son's bedroom, and the attic is only over my boy's bedroom at the front of the house. A week or two later, we were organizing my youngest room in preparation for him moving to a big boy bed. My husband was in the attic because our original plan had to bring down my oldest toddler bed until I realized I couldn't get it out of our attic because of the slope of the roof. I have no idea how I originally got it up there. (laughs) We ended up just converting his crib, but while he was up there, my husband found a puppet in a box (gasps) that he had brought home from his mom's house a few months prior. No. (laughs) No. A puppet? No. Mm -mm. Uh Uh-uh. Imagine a boxing nun puppet, but with a weird Japanese video game character's head. He brought it down and gave it to my oldest son. Y'all, I hated this thing from the moment I saw it and decreed it had to stay on the shelf where I would not see it. Later that night, I went into my son's room and they hadn't put it where they said they would. And I screamed when I saw it because I wasn't expecting it there. Yeah. I could not sleep and could not get the image of this thing crawling down the hallway Uh -uh. to get me out of my head. Nope. Girl, I saw Puppet Master. I know exactly what you're talking about. That movie ruined me. Sign me not the fuck up. Mm -mm. Also, if y'all listen to Ghost in the Birds, this sounds like some shit that would be on there. Mm -hmm. I literally sat on the couch and cried the next night until my husband took it out of the house and put it in the car. I could not deal with it. We eventually took it back to my mother-in-law's house. My husband didn't want to throw it out because apparently it's collectible. Mm. The next time we were at my mother-in-law's house, I noticed she had some partially burned sage in her guest room. 
I never ask her about it. We still have some noises occasionally, but nothing that can't be explained away as our house was built in 1900. Oh my God. Things really calmed down once we got that stupid puppet out of the house. Thank you both for all you do. I think you know how much I love you ladies and this podcast and our Facebook family, Valerie A.B. Thank you so much. I remember this going down. I did not know it was that puppet, though. No. I didn't know about that. And so did the sage work? Like, at your house, like, did it, did that, I mean, like, I know you said it's, like, calmed down and stuff, but, like, do you still, like, did it work? Yeah. That's my question. (laughs) And then I'm going to need you to call your mother-in-law and ask her why the fuck she had the sage. Mm -hmm. Is her house now haunted, too, because that stupid fucking doll? And if it is, send that shit to Zach Bagans, because he's the only one that would want it. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Please. Please. I could just see him having it, and he'd be like, it's possessing me. And then, like, pow, pow, pow. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'm a priest who punches. And he'd be like, knockout. (laughs) Wow, that was a great story, Valerie. Thank you for sharing. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That was, like, a long time ago when she shared that whole thing. I know. I got to go back and look at the pictures because I remember it, but I can't remember what the pictures looked like. Yeah, and I will get those and post them on Instagram Mm -hmm. and on our, like, Facebook announcement and stuff. Wow, those were so good, y'all. You made us laugh. You made us cry. You made us scared. You made us want to fear fart and shart. (laughs) You made us do all the emotions. Thank y'all so freaking much for sending these amazing stories in. Keep them coming. Send them to aparanormalchicks at gmail.com or go to our website, aparanormalchicks.com. And click on contact us and go there. Also, don't forget we have new merch. Yes. Oh, my gosh. And it's awesome. Yes. And so on the new merch, some of it is on the featured page, like when you like click on it. Mm-hmm. But go to each of the little drop downs because it's all first when you go to the drop downs. Like, yeah. oh, let me look at the tank tops. Click it. And it's going to be the first row. Yeah, featured, because so, I think that, that was, some people are getting confused on the website. The featured products are just, like, kind of our top what's going on type yeah. things. But each one has all the products. So, mm-hmm. featured products doesn't equal all products. Yeah. Okay. Also, I'm putting a call out there. Because this last watch party that we did, we were talking about ambient stories. Yes. And, y'all, ambient stories, they give me so much life. And if we get a few, like, put it in your title, like, Mm -hmm. ambient stories, because I want to do these. And I have a fucking ambient story. Well, I have several from my sister. Mm -hmm. And I have a video that I will share Mm -hmm. in the Facebook group because she ain't in there. I mean, even so, like, she knows. I, like, I tell her I will play this fucking video if I'm having a bad day because it cracks me the fuck up. It's one of my favorite things (laughs) ever. But, like, I will share that. So, if y'all want to know these stories about my sister... And see this video, please send me y'all's ambient stories. Like, if your mama, if your grandmother, if you, your roommate, any of this weird-ass shit that goes on with ambient, please send it to us. Like, it doesn't have to be creepy. It doesn't whatever, because that is funny. And, like, that can be a palate cleanser, too, with mm-hmm. these, like, sad or scary or whatever. Like, please. That will make my freaking year. Well... You heard it, folks, right here. Send all your shit in. And remember, creep it real and and don't don't get scared. scared.